Okay, the owner has left uh, me these 9 to 42s. So we're going to use these or any ball. I know some people think it's wasteful, but I really like when the strings are in individual packages. <laughs> There's just something about it. So, anyways. Because it's a left handed guitar, I'm going to go backwards from what I normally do. No, I always do it uh, <laughs> the bass string first. So these guitars, just like a strap, can stand on their ends, right? I'm just going to run that right through the trim block, and away we go. Alright, six more to go. No, this isn't a seven string. That was last week. Five more to go. Thought I'd bring you around to a seldom seen area. <laughs> Pretty neat. Right? Look at these. This trim block. That's you can see where the trim arm goes. The ball ends. I'm just gonna pull them a bit. Very nice, like super quality. Hmm. That's a point for the John Page classic Ashburn. Alright, let's turn this over. Get all our strings. Just make sure they're pulled through the trim nicely. And I didn't miss any slots. No, we're good. Because I have to get used to all these angles too. <laughs> I don't do too many lefties. Probably get, you know, one lefty every couple of months maybe. It's really not more, more than that. I don't know, is left-handed guitar playing, is it like left-handed golfers? There weren't a lot of left-hand guitars around, so you played righties even though you should have played a lefty? Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Alright, we'll go uh, one and a half tuners about. Pull it nice and straight. Pull it back. And i got to kink it around the other way. i got to remember that. I'm going to cut some of this off though. There we go. Because we have to turn it this way. See? So that kink actually goes the other way. Right there. Everything's backwards. Makes my brain hurt. <laughs> Whoop. Yeah, it is this way. What am I thinking? I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> it's that way, dummy. All right, come back this way. All right. Yeah. Oh, that took a while. Shouldn't be doing this late at night. <laughs> okay. It looks good though. Okay, I'll trim a little more of that off. All right, five more to go. Okay, I'll tune this baby up. Okay, go the other way. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. Not making fun of left-handed people or anything like that. It's just for me. I'm set up to do everything the other way. I think in this tuning is just to get the strings close. And I'm gonna stretch them out now, right? And again, we stretch them out so they break in quicker and they keep their tuning stability better. 
Oh, did you hear that? It also sets the string in the nut and maybe even on the tuning post if it slipped or something like that. So it's always good. Especially wing wing. Especially with the wound strings. Everyone's got a technique to stretch. I like to stretch them at least three, four times after an initial tuning. You can see that we're, we're like a full step down there. Yeah, the wound strings really stretch out. Alright, that's better. No string trees. And I know people uh, don't like the Fender string trees a lot, but there's a reason they're there. That angle is not very steep, even with a staggered tuner. So these tuners here are taller than these two and these two. So these are the shortest, this is the middle, the back. Kind of like a string tree. You can hear the difference, eh? The nut slots are cut well though, so shouldn't uh, be a problem. Okay, I'm let this sit probably overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, here we are the next day, and I'm just gonna show you something here. Here's four sixty fourths, which is about 1.6 millimeters at the 17th fret, and I can't get the gauge under. Well, the six string I can't. You can hear it. So the action has dropped a lot because I sucked down the bridge down here, right? <laughs> so usually I check the neck relief first, but this time I'm actually going to raise the action up. I'll check and see what this is. Yes, this is 1.5 millimeters, this little hex wrench, hex screwdriver. <clears throat> and I'm going to raise the action up before checking the neck relief because it's just bugging me here. And I can tell it needs to come up. So using the gauge I can get to 464 pretty easily without you know lifting the guitar up 10 times, checking it. And then I'll use the string action ruler to fine-tune any adjustment if I need to. And you want to make sure the saddles are nice and straight and parallel. Turn it around. And it has to come up quite a bit. <laughs> Just scraping it a bit, so I raise it a touch. So until I can't hear it, there we go. Cool. Okay, let me do the other ones. Okay, here's the last one. So it's the first string. So it's just passing under. So I've had the question before. How come you don't use a radius gauge to set the radius of the strings. Well, you don't need to. If you're measuring from the underside of the string to the top of the fret, as you go along, if you're always doing the same measurement, like 464, 1.6 millimeters, it's naturally going to follow the radius of the fingerboard, right? Logically, I think that works. And the only time I ever check for radius is if I'm sanding or I'm just curious. <laughs> so, what do you think we have here? Uh, let's see if I can get that on there. Okay. Sorry, I gotta get up here. <clears throat> I'm thinking it's a 12. Yeah, 12 inch radius. Okay just like a Les Paul. 
All right, now I'm going to check the neck relief just because that was just bothering. The strings were basically touching the frets down there. <clears throat> you can always make adjustments to string height. That's very easy. So I'd like to see between eight and ten thousandths of an inch at the seventh fret. Capo on the first, push down on the last fret, and let's see here. Yeah, I think you can hear that, right? Just scraping, and we'll do eight. And then you can also just do a little bounce test, right? So it's definitely bouncing. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, and I haven't retuned which uh, will potentially change the height of the strings too and the neck relief. So let me do that quick. Okay, everything's retuned. <clears throat> so everything is retuned. And we can check our measurements again. So string height. Yeah, we're just bouncing. So just barely. That's good. I think I'm going to have to put a little bit of neck relief in there. Here's eight thousandths. But before I change anything with the neck relief, it's not a bad idea to just put it in the playing position. Again, it's left handed, so I'm going to have a hard time here. But if you just strum. And I'm not getting any string buzz. He would get string buzz in this area if there wasn't enough neck relief. So I think I'll leave it. I could tweak it at the end if I need to. But for now, I think we're good. Okay, so before I check the intonation, I like to see where the saddles are, relatively speaking, where they should be. So the first string, again, it's a left-handed guitar. The first string should be at 25 and a half, which is the scale length, so 25 and a half inches. So I'm going to measure from the face of the nut to that saddle, and it's pretty good. I'd say maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch, maybe back a little longer, but again, maybe it needs it. I don't know. So I'll check that. And it looks like we have some intonation there. So usually the E string, the 6th string, has to go back further. <laughs> People seem to be hesitant to do that. But okay, well, let's do the intonation next. Okay, we check the intonation. And again, you can check in the playing position. I find when I put on the bench, I support the neck right around the 7th fret, this area. The neck stays pretty flat. And my measurements are consistent when I lift the guitar up in the playing position. So... You do it the way you like, in the playing position, on a bench, but always do it the same way so that you're consistent. So you check the intonation, and I apologize if this seems, you know, that's no good. <laughs> Redundant or basic or whatever, but it's always new people watching my channel, and I, I get those questions, but if you don't want to see this anymore, let me know. <laughs> so again, these strings are new, so they don't always hold their tune as well. So we've got the open E, <coughs> can hit the harmonic. That's, that's hard to do with my... Uh... <laughs> wow, my timing's off. Let's just try, there we go. We're a little flat still, eh? And let's try the fretted note. Again, don't press down super hard. That's pretty good considering the string is a little flat. So let's try the A string. Just sharp. And I'll try the harmonic again. It's showing flat. The string is flat though. <laughs> and the fretted note is flat, so I'm not surprised. So I think what I'm going to do before uh, adjusting it completely is I'll stretch these strings out again and uh, do the intonation. But of course, if we want to adjust the intonation, these strat style bridges are super easy, right? We just take a screwdriver and we 
move the saddle back and forth. So if we want to sharpen the string, we're going to move it forward to shorten it. If we want to flatten the string, we move it back to lengthen it. So I'll take care of that. I'll check for any fret noise here. I'll start around the ninth fret here. That was me. Again, you can do this in the playing position, but I found that on the bench like this, if I don't find anything when it's on the bench, I'm not going to find it in the playing position. So, again, do it the way you like to do it. Wow, this is really uh, throwing me for a loop. I haven't worked on a lefty guitar in a while. Let's look at the pickup height. So I'll use my pickup height gauge. So I like to see 1 8 on the bass side, 3 30 seconds on the treble. Again, those are starting points. You put them where you like. So you press down the last fret. Too much space. And you can see what the gauge is. And these are brass, of course, so they're non-magnetic. These have to come up. I'll use the 3 30 seconds. Now on this side, same thing. Now again, you might like them down there, but you could run into issues when they're too far away, you're just not picking up any volume, they're too close, you're getting these weird sort of harmonic noises, that kind of thing. So start with like a known number, like you know, 1 8 and 3 30 seconds, like I just uh, showed you, so 1 8 you know, we're looking at about 3.2 millimeters and, uh, you know, 2.4 millimeters if you want to use metric, which is perfectly fine. Use the system you prefer, more comfortable with. I had a couple of comments recently too about that. Again, about metric and imperial. It's like, hey, use what you like and are comfortable with. Doesn't matter. Okay, that one's good. All right, so I'm gonna go around and fix all these. Okay, I'm a little out of sequence this time because I've already checked this. So I'm not gonna lie to you and say that uh, I'm doing this in order, no. <laughs> I checked this earlier and it was fine, so I'm filming it now. So this was about 16 thousandths beforehand. And we're right there, and you can see, oh, well, you can hear maybe. I hope you can see, it's hard on the camera, I know. But I'm right up against it. If I try and strum the note, let's try, get a little bit of buzz, right? So that tells you that the string is just touching it. So 16 thousandths, that's really nice. So that's a good low first fret action. Uh, so overall, you know, this guitar is set up really slick, and that's not going anywhere either now, which is a good thing. Okay, so the setup is all done. We've got the neck relief around eight thousandths at the seventh fret. We have the string height at four sixty-fourths at the seventeenth fret, which is one point six millimeters. The first fret action is really nice at about sixteen thousandths, and we have the pickups set up to one eighth of an inch on the bass side and three thirty seconds of an inch on the treble and the intonation has been done so it intonated very well last thing to do is put the back plate on but i'll do that after so what are my impressions of this john page classic ashburn guitar well i really like it it's a solid feeling guitar it's not heavy but it feels really well built i like the body shape this little shorter horn, kind of a Strandberg sort of look. And the contouring, very nice. So overall, quality components, I, you know, I can't play, it's left-handed, it's hard for me to play it, so I'm sure these pickups sound good, but again, pickups are subjective. Everyone hears them differently. But I would definitely say check out John Page Classic Guitars. They have a bunch of other guitar models, of course, but uh, yeah. Quality build, quality maker. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing this guitar for the first time. All right, take care.